And here's the swim, a long sweeping bend, quite shallow in places. Average depth is about seven foot. Nine foot when the water's up a little bit and then 12 foot in the summer. But at the moment we're fishing in about seven foot of water. Out to the left. That's me. Eel section. As I say, fished on the deck. Float fished. Size 4 micro barb hook. That's that eel section's hair rigged at the moment. My normal fashion. But things may change. If the runs come and the, I can't convert bites, then we're going to have to change things up. So it's a sweeping bend. I had that in shot and now I can't find it. <laughs> Unbelievable, isn't it? Eyes are playing tricks on me. There it is. Bit of weed on it, that's why it's sitting low in the water. That's the middle rod. That's half a herring. Small one though this time. I'm not going with my huge baits today. I'm going to uh, see if they take the smaller baits. There's, there's my middle rod. That's half a herring, half a small herring. So it's only about, that section's missing the head. It's only about four or five inches. That's hair rig as well. Micro barb full curved hook. And then my right hand rod is down there on the right hand side. And that is a small roach hooked directly with a circle hook. Roach is about two inches, maybe three inches long at the most. I've run out of my little one inch ones I had the other day. So all three rods are in, I say so. It's quite overcast day at the moment, quite windy. I do apologise if the wind's interfering on the dialogue. It's hard to tell until you come round to edit it how bad it's interfered with it. But that's a swim, I say a long sweeping bend. Let's hope there's some pike around. Oh, morning troops. Uh, we've been at eight, two hours, not a touch, not even a, looks like a touch. I've been busy <laughs> tying up some new rigs that I want to try out, some new material, new hook patterns. So that's what I've been doing. I've been, you know, the last, last hour or so, I've, whoop, did you hear that? There's a lot of weed running down, not big weed, you know, Little horrible little green whispery weed that you can pick up when they're in the when the river or drains running off. Ends up like your whole line ends up looking camouflaged. So there's a lot of that's coming down. The, the, the river is still very very low. And it's, the water's dropping all the time. So there's less water for the pike to be in, but I haven't located any yet. Yes, yeah, so I've been tying some rigs, and I've been using this stuff. Now, there's a question for you. I'm quite impressed with the material. But I want something like that, exactly like that, or similar. <laughs> in 30 or 40 pound breaking strain. Does anyone out there know if anyone does this? Because 20 pounds all right for 
perch, mm, some pike. I mean, you know, I, I, you could land a 30, 20 pound pike or a 30 pound pike on that, no problem. But I prefer me, the end tackle to be a bit more robust. You know, I, you know, if I'm using wire traces, I'm, I always use 40 pounds. Never anything lower than 40. So, if I've used it, how does it perform? And can I get it in 30 or 40 pound braking strain? Because it's, it's really quite good, really supple, really thin. You know, I've made a couple of rigs up with it. And they're, they're the rigs I've made up are for hooking fish directly. I won't go through them now, because I don't even know they work. So, I've, so yeah, so I've made some of these rigs up. So I'm just wondering if anyone out there knows where I can get this. 30 or 40 pound breaking strain. Oh, I mean, not this, that has to be this make. I'm not a tackle tart, it could be any make as long as it's the same sort of stuff. It's a mixture of braid and wire, isn't it? So that's what I'm after. It's very, very supple, very thin. It looks like it could be just a ticket. Of, you know, the thing I've been looking for for these finicky bites, but yeah, I'd prefer it a bigger breaking strain, really. The sun's out, right in my face, so I've not had a bite, but it's early. I, what I should do is I shall fish this swim till midday. And if I don't have any joy in this stretch midday, I shall whiz round the bend and fish the other the other bend around the corner there. Yeah, I've got to try and locate some fish. At the moment, there's no signs of any silvers. No cormorants, no grebes, no herons, so uh, you know, with this water dropping down, the fish might have moved on and be holding up somewhere safer, deeper. So, at the moment, it's been a nice, pleasant morning making rigs, but <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> Let's try and catch some pike. Decision time, decision time. It's uh, almost midday, and then a touch. The snag is, they've dropped the river down at least a foot, maybe two since this morning. So, at the moment, I can get to the water's edge to land and return fish and swim in. If I move, there's no guarantee I'm gonna find a swim with access to the water. Because once, once you're out of reed bed, it's the mud and silt, you, you, you ain't getting out there. You're just going to sink, you're going to lose your boots, you're going to get sucked into the mud, and that's it, day over. So, it's either a change of swim or a change of venue. So, you know, it's, uh, you don't get many hours in the day during, you know, January, February time, so it's, twist or bust. I say I've sat here for four hours, I have not had a touch. Is that because the river's running off or is that because there's no pike here? Uh, I don't know. So I'm going to have to uh, give 5-10 minutes contemplation and then I soon find out. I'll either be <laughs> moaning that I should have moved or showing you a new swim. But yeah, at the moment it's uh, it's hard work, and it's uh, oh, you know finding an appropriate swim now. You know it's going to accommodate me and accommodate fish safety. So yeah, it's really it really has dropped. You know it's like a like a quagmire at the water's edge. You know I've got two points where I can get to the edge and land fish without sinking. I don't know. I don't know. Drives us up the wall, doesn't it, this fishing lark? <laughs> Let's see what we're going to do. Ooh, worked up the sweat. <laughs> Backed up at half 11, I'm fishing by 10 past 12. Even though I had to drive nearly a half a mile to a mile, 
downstream to find a stretch that even remotely had some access to the water's edge. So I've got a big reed bed in front of me that I can walk out on without sinking into the mud so I can land fish and return them safely. Whether there's any pike here or not, it's a different matter. But it's a swim I've fished before, it's a swim I've had fish out of, even though you know, it's a lot more shallow. Yeah, you know, the water's, I say the water's down to a three foot on last week. And I've been dropping it all day. It's a swim I've fished before, quite confident here. I know the, I know the layout of the, the bottom, I know where the slacks are, the eddies, deep bits. So, you know, the baits are presented well. The same baits as this morning, same rigs as this morning. Yes, yeah, so it was just a mad dash, work up a sweat, get everything in the car. And then I had to drive along. I found one that was about half a mile away, but it wasn't ideal. Drove down right to the end of the uh, stretch. It was controlled by the Boston, and uh, I've got a swim, so I'm, I'm in. Baits are in, you've got a chance. As long as the bait's in the water, you've got a chance. <laughs> oh, I keep, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not, uh, it's not picking up. And then, I mean, the weather is, I would say, temperature wise, it's lovely. You know, it's, it's about nine, 10 degrees. Gale force wind blowing, but it's blowing over the bank, so it's missing me. The water quality, you know, is a bit coloured now. But you know, it's not, it's not bundles of debris coming down, it's just very low and it's running off and the pike along here don't like it when it's running off, so it's a case of presenting your baits well and hoping that they stop running it off because you know, they've dropped it right down, they can't drop it any more really, so hopefully they'll stop running it off this afternoon and we can fill our boots. I'll show you the swim. <laughs> this one you've seen before, but you know, it's a... Uh, it's changed, the AO has changed slightly with the lower levels. Normally where I'd have my right hand rod is mud, basically. So, <laughs> so that's that out the window. I'm fishing in about seven foot of water where I am at the moment. Uh, yeah, so it's, baits are in, fingers are crossed, toes are crossed. Let's catch some pike. Yeah. Here's a swim, you can see it's a long straight. There's the left hand rod. Tail section of the herring. A lot smaller bait I've been using of late. I'm hoping that they take it with a bit more confidence. Needle rod. There's a whole sardine. Not a huge sardine though, a lot smaller, again a lot smaller than I've been using of late. I've got a small sardine about six inches. You can see the weed as they're running it off, pulling it down under the water every now and then. And there's a the right hand rod. That's a whole roach. Hook directly that one, and that's what I mean. So that's normally where I would, where that mud is. Is normally where I would have where the mud meets the water. Is normally where my right hand rod would be. So you can see how far they've dropped it down. So we've had to go out from the bank to get any depth. So all three rods in, raring to go. Let me have a cup of coffee cooled down after that hard, long hard slogger moving. <laughs> Jets go over it just as I want to say something. <laughs> well here we are, last couple of hours of daylight. The river's actually stopped running off. And our confidence is a bit higher. I've, uh, as soon as it's dropped off, stop running. The wind has 
it's shifted slightly, so it's going over. And I've got a bit of calm water, and I've seen signs of silverfish, I've seen signs of pike. So I can go out a lot further, I can move around wherever I want to now without the weed and the sediment dragging the floats down. So I've got one the left hand rod is out in the middle channel there. See if there's anything about there. I've, I've seen I've seen some fry getting chased in the margins but that is too close in. It's only a foot deep there at the most. But they're there I think so hopefully we're gonna fill our boots this afternoon because we've had two days on the river now, four different swims and we ain't had a run. You know, it's it's hard work. You, you know, you, at the end of the day, you do go fishing to catch fish. I mean, I like the nature and everything else, but blinking hell. You know, I mean, you want fish on the bank, don't you? you know I mean, so I say that's two days, four swims, and we ain't had a run yet. And we've only had an hour or two of when the river's been fishable, really. Today, as soon as I arrived, it was running off. It's dropped another two foot today. It's stopped running off now. And everything looks perfect. Except fair for a fish, I hope. Even changed my hats, my lucky, one of my lucky hats. They're all my lucky hats. I, I just change them to see if anything <laughs> instigates a change. I know it's a silly superstition, but that's my one, changing the hat. What's, what's all your superstitions? That's mine. If I change my hat, I think I'm gonna do better. So that's what I've done. Put the old pike hat on. And hopefully, as I say, it's uh, it's just gone calm and still. But I've only got two hours of daylight, as I say. But it does look perfect. I've, so I've just repositioned my rods. I'm going to give them half hour, 40 minutes. I don't get no joy. I'm going to boost them with oil, reposition them again. Yeah, got to catch something. Blink, you know. Got to catch something. Oh well, 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 what are we going to do now, troops? The moon's out. The sun is setting. And we're on another dreaded blank. As I said earlier, it's two days on the river. Four different swims. And we are struggling there. I say it's lovely and calm. I'm out of the wind. You can see a ripple on the water further downstream. It stopped running off. The water level's rising again, slowly but surely. We still can't find a pike. I mean, look at that.
That was mud earlier. And the water's up again. But we still ain't managed to find any pike. So it's risen, it's risen a foot in the last half hour. There's no pike anywhere. <laughs> And grit over there in the distance. He's found some food. Kingfisher's whizzing up and down the bank. Can we just catch one? <laughs> he says. Yep. So now I could walk out on that. There was mud there earlier. Now it's underwater. There's the right hand rod. And that little deep hole there. It's a little bit deeper now. Still no pike. Hole roach. There's the middle. Hole sardine, not been touched. And there's the left hand rod. Herring tail. That's not been touched either. Running out of time. Another day drawing to a close. The old head camera's going away and the old head torch will be coming out. It's, it's a lot darker than it looks on the camera. You know, it's another, another day, another day disaster fish wise i mean i've enjoyed don't get me wrong i've always enjoyed myself on the bank but you know you've got to catch fish i've just seen a lovely <laughs> kingfisher whiz out of the side drain there you know it's just half hour ago an hour ago it there was it you know it was fry topping there was lots of movement around i, I really thought we were set fair for a good hour or two before it got dark but it's just not panned out, I'm afraid. It's uh, the moon's out, the sun's down, and uh, I'm stuck on the bank. I'm the only one, <laughs> I'm the only idiot on the river. You know, it's uh, it's been bombing off the last, you know, last couple of times I've visited here. It's been bombing off all day, and sort of they stop running it off an hour or two before it gets dark and it's uh looks fantastic it looks cracking now you, you you know you can't get your head around while you're not catching obviously there's no pike around you know it's the baits are well presented there's there's no debris coming down oh, i don't know I'm at a loss. I've got to track the fish down. That's what you've got to do. I mean, if you're if you're sitting in a swim or a stretch, but there's no prey fish, there's no pike. But as I say, I've seen silverfish topping it all afternoon. Once it's once that river stopped running off, there's plenty of activity. So they're here. So I'm hoping to nick a fish before it gets dark. That's all I can hope. It's another hard. January, February, <laughs> hard February slog. You know, what I mean, I forgot what month it was there. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's hard work sometimes with fishing luck. You know, it's 
all the will in the world, all the prep, all the <laughs> all the effort. If you're not gonna, if you don't get a run, you can't catch. So I say, I'm, it looks a lot brighter on the camera than it does here at the moment. It's you know it's getting dark quite quickly. I'm gonna stick the old head torch on. I'm not gonna pack up till it gets dark. You know I'll pack up when I can't see me floats. Even though I've got bite alarms, if I can't see me floats, I'll pack up. But another hard one. Who knows? There might be a cherry on the cake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There might be a twenty before it gets dark. Obviously. If I do catch anything, I'll tag it on the end of this. Really appreciate the views, the comments, and the likes. And we have to go again another day. You know, it's uh, I've, look, I've changed my app for the <laughs> third out of the day. Thought it would just bring me luck, but it ain't. It's like a mill pond just in front of me. It's like a mill pond to the right and to the left. The gale force winds are still hitting the river. But here, I can see silverfish topping. We'll keep at it. Thanks for watching. And uh, if I don't catch anything at the end of this video, I really do appreciate the views, and the likes, and the comments. You know, it, it means a lot. Thank you very much. Let's see if we can catch you a pike for all the effort you put in watching. <laughs> oh, God. Let's attack it.